people out there who are not trying to be dishonest, and there are people out there who are being dishonest. Hey everyone, Brad Proprietor of Barstool Entertainment. I'm going to be doing a different video, and it has to do with buying and selling comics on eBay. I've been watching some eBay videos or YouTube videos on guys getting stung buying something on eBay and bad packaging. I've had my own encounter with bad packaging and it's kind of sad. I mean, there's people out there who are not trying to be dishonest and there are people out there who are being dishonest. And there are some tips and stuff I can say maybe for sellers and buyers on how to improve your shipping and as buyers what to look for if you're dealing with an inexperienced eBay seller or even a possibly a scam seller. So let's get on with this video and for the first part, let me give you some background information on myself. I started selling comics and action figures about two decades ago or so on eBay. And it was a way for me to make some extra money on things I really didn't want anymore. I also started selling slabbed comics on eBay a couple years after uh, CGC started their whole business of slabbing comics and I can tell you I mean after some changes uh, to their policies I kind of stopped selling on eBay I kind of moved on and we're do I was doing other things I would sell on eBay on occasion and usually it was stuff that I could make a little money on, make a little profit. I've sold a variety of different things, but my main focus has always been on comics and action figures. And, I mean, last time I sold comics, I was selling some slab stuff just almost at enough to where I'd be making a profit on the costs very slim margin of profit and I think out of the half dozen I sold well or whatever all the half dozen I was selling I maybe sold two or three I mean you look at the you know wall back here and that stuff that didn't sell on eBay or I wouldn't sell on eBay I mean the Archie there 9.4 came back Low grade, it's not going to sell. Variant cover, no one's going to want it. And it's not worth popping open and resending. And of course, then there's stuff in my cabinets that, I mean, that amazing Spider Man, that was one on eBay. I got it real reasonable. It's 7.5. Then you can't see it, but I have a spawn number one that I sold, that I bought and got for a reasonable price. But out of the stuff I bought on eBay, there were there was at least one where the packaging was terrible and I got a video in the upper whatever right corner here of a link to that and you can see that this person uh uh, see, it's they were inexperienced in selling. And how do inexperienced sellers come on to eBay? Well, usually they are people who have an eBay account and were selling stuff that weren't comics. And somehow, whether it was a family member or they were at a garage sale, bought a storage locker, there were comics in that garage sale or storage locker or whatever. And they thought, hey, I can make money on this. And they can make good money. But they don't know how 
to sell comics. They don't understand what it's like to ship comics. And inadvertently, they wind up sending something and it gets damaged in the mail and they have to deal with that headache. You know, I mean, as a buyer, if you are buying, it is on you to do your research on the seller and do your due diligence and investigate. And my example, like I said, is many of these sellers, if they're inexperienced sellers in selling comics, they were selling something else, like uh, let's say kitschy stuff, um, computer parts. And all of a sudden, they have comics and they're trying to sell on their eBay site to make money. And these sellers might have high ratings. If they have a low rating, they're a new seller and they have no idea on how to sell comics. And I've seen guys get stung that way where, well, the guy had a decent rating, 100%. Yeah, but if he only had 25 people responding to him, that is a key indicator. A very low seller response. You know, like, if they don't have over 100 positive feedback and maybe a little less than 100%, I don't buy from them. And if the seller is obviously inexperienced, like they have a couple comics, and then all of a sudden they have um, some tchotchkes and stuff that they're selling, I won't buy from them. Also, another real clear flag of a buyer that you don't want to buy from is a really, really low shipping cost. I mean, some people, they're looking at a comic and they're thinking, oh, it's not that light. I'll put it in a padded envelope and send it media mail. Uh, comics are not media mail. And I can probably do a video about that and why comics are not media mail. I mean, a very low shipping cost is a, a key red flag that they don't know what they're doing when it comes to selling comics. And then the other thing is if they don't have a lot of photos. If they have only a photo of the front of the comic, don't buy. Front of the comic, back of the comic, any possible defects are shot um, for slabbed comics, front of the comic, back of the comic, and a tight focus on the um, barcode CGC assigns or CBS or whatever it is the other competitors are. They have a barcode that you can check. And you should photograph images of the staples, the spine, and again, any defects. If someone gives it like, oh, it's a mint or a very good comic or anything like that, don't buy. Unless you can see really good photos and even then be suspect. You should never say a grade on a raw comic. You should never say mint. You should never say very good. You should never say anything. All you should do when you sell a comic is you take a photo of the front, you take a photo of the back, hey, even open it up to the middle and take a photo of that center. And you state, this comic is, you know, in this condition. It has these damages and etc. You never really say, oh, well, it's very good condition because that means something different to everyone. And grading is very relative. You should just say, this is the comic, these are the defects, these are the photos, and leave it at that. Now, one of the things that you might think of if you are both a buyer and a seller is 
you need to, if you're selling a really, really high-end comic, is insurance. Shipping insurance. It's very cheap. And if, let's say, you send the comic and it comes back, or the slab as a seller, to a buyer and it gets damaged in transit, well, buyer's going to come back to you and want money. And eBay's going to come back at you and want their money back. If you have insurance and you say, look, it's damaged in transit and the buyer is willing to work with you, you can file a claim with the U.S. Postal Service or whatever carrier you use and get your money back. You're not out that money. Because you know, if you're selling a $1,000 comic and someone buys it, and you ship it for five bucks via media mail, and it's damaged to a point to where the guy's like, look, it's not even a thousand dollar comic anymore, no matter what I do with it, and I want my money back. Can you take that hit? Can you take that thousand dollar hit? And I'm going to use an example, X-Men number one. Let's say you put it up for sale, you're an inexperienced seller, and you put it up for auction, and suddenly you got $10,000. Anyone who has a comic and all of a sudden they get $10,000 for it, they're going to think, Yeah, okay, now you got 10000 bucks jackpot, right? Hey, can you take that hit? When the buyer says it came in damaged. I want money back. Most people can't even take a $100 hit. Now all of a sudden you're taking a $10,000 hit. And when you consent to eBay's conditions, if the buyer files a complaint and eBay says, okay, we're going to give you your money back, eBay's coming back at you. They're coming back at you. And that could be a nightmare your bank account whatever you get overdrawn if you've spent the money correct me if i'm wrong in the comments but as far as i know ebay does not hold money for high-end items it's bought and within two or three days you've got the money dumped into your account well they're going to claw that money back and if you said, oh, I got $10,000, I'm going to go buy myself a really, really nice whatever. And all of a sudden you spend that 10000 bucks in a couple days. All of a sudden you get, buyer says, you screwed them. And not in those nasty terms, but they want their money back. Again, that becomes a nightmare for you as a seller. And it's a headache for the buyer. But eventually, with eBay's policies, buyers are the ones who end up being treated like gold, even though it's buyer beware. Now, the best advice I can give for any seller, and this is going to be complete seller advice. Medium flat rate box. They're free at UPS and or USPS. They're free. You can pick up boxes. They hold up to 70 pounds. And think about that. What if someone put 70 pounds in this box and it lands on your poorly packaged comic book? You can write fragile all you want on a box or an envelope. What happens is USP, USPS receives that product and they don't handle it with kid gloves. They just throw it onto a conveyor belt. It gets moved around and jumbled around and dumped into bins. Other packages get tossed on it. 
And if you're a real and experienced seller and you're deciding, oh, I'll just put it in a, you know, padded envelope, a uh, couple cardboard, pieces of cardboard and ship it media mail. Again, comics are not media mail. And it takes three weeks to get to your buyer. How much damage can be done to that comic? Now, the medium flat rate box here, you can put in 12 bag and boarded comics or three slabs, double boxed, double padded, and you pack that thing tight. Again, you can put 70 pounds in here, and you have to pack this tight to where it's almost bulging with padding and it almost makes your comics invulnerable and when you send it to the buyer they will appreciate it because buyers are willing to pay and if you're selling high ticket items as a seller the box is automatically insured for 50 bucks after that you have to add insurance and postal insurance is very cheap. I mean, you're going to put something up for a thousand bucks, you insure that package for a thousand bucks. And you pass, you can pass that cost on to a buyer. In fact, buyers, you should be asking your seller, are you insuring this? Do you offer insurance? Is this insured? Because if they say no, you don't buy. You do not buy uninsured high-end comics, period. Slabbed or raw. Insurance. In fact, you should be asking for A, insurance. And as a seller, you should be signature confirmation. That is stuff you add on. And again, you can pass it along to the buyer. But anything over, like even a, I would do it for something even over a hundred bucks. Insurance and signature confirmation. You want that verification that your merchandise made it and i've had sellers do that i've gotten notices in my mail oh you have a package you got to pick up okay so i gotta go down to the post office and the guy says here you go and i had to sign for it and he checked my id make sure I was me, and then he handed me my package. Again, these are things you can do as a seller. And as a buyer, if you ask a seller, what does your shipping include? A medium flat rate box on eBay, their price, it's under 15 bucks as far as the cost. Add, start adding everything in. And guess what? I mean, if you're doing an auction and you're selling something and it could potentially go into the thousands of dollars, what you as a seller want to do is tell them you will be offering insurance. And even if you took the hit yourself out of that $10,000 jackpot comic, you're not going to be losing money if it gets damaged in transit. And again, you got to pack things tight. You know, I mean, as buyer, like I've told you, if they aren't giving you high-end shipping and they are not offering insurance or signature confirmation, don't buy. Do not buy. And that is, I mean, the best advice I can use. I mean, 
uh, you wind up, like I said, that jackpot comic as a seller. Can you afford that hit? Can you afford to lose $10,000? Most buyers who are buying that jackpot comic are probably taking a financial hit in a way themselves. I mean, if they can afford to pay $10,000, great, beautiful. They're putting it on a charge card. I'd say you're kind of stupid unless you're going to pay it off in a few payments. But, I mean, let's face it. You're going to do what you're going to do. And my video, again, this is just an informative video on how not to get stung or hit really bad with, you know, buying high-end merchandise on eBay. And as a seller and a buyer, you protect yourself. Insurance is the number one thing you do. Number two is signature confirmation on anything over a hundred bucks. And again, as buyers, look out for those inexperienced buyers. First off is, you know, one of the major red flags would be they are selling other things that are not comic related and that's the majority of their sales. Two, very low shipping. And three, lack of photos. And you'll start to realize that, yeah, okay, these guys, you know, the sellers are not trying to scam you. They just don't know how to handle things. And it's kind of sad because there are, are potentially a lot of comics out there in the wild that somebody's going to come across. They're going to try and make money. And it's going to end up being a lot of headaches and heartache all around because they didn't know what they were doing. I'm Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment. I hope you found this video instructional and interesting. If you did, hit the thumbs up button and comment. I still want to know if eBay holds the money for high-end merchandise because it seems to me the way they normally do things they just deposit the money in a day, couple days. But for high end, they probably should hold the money until the buyer says, yeah, hey, everything's good on my end. But that is my opinion. Thanks for watching. Um, I should go through this too, is I usually put videos up uh, about video games four times a week and if you're interested hit that big annoying subscribe button and that bell icon and you'll be notified when I post videos thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and most of all thanks for stopping by